It's been 10 years since Hasbro took over the Marvel Legends license from the dearly departed Toy Biz. May they rest in peace. Over that 10 years, they've produced hundreds of Iron Mans and some other characters, and yet, like Galactus, collectors still hunger. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the 10 Most Wanted Marvel Legends Volume 3. If you haven't already checked out Volumes 1 and 2, check them out as soon as you're done watching this video. For Volume 3, we enlisted everyone on the Action Figure subreddit, our Patreon, and our Facebook page. You did not disappoint. The initial survey had over 250 different characters, first-timers, alternate costumes, updates to old Toy Biz figures, and some weird suggestions from people who might not have been paying attention. The Punisher has been released twice in the last year, and there's another one on the way. Why waste a slot that could have gone to Howard the Duck? One final note before we roll on, we wrote and shot this video on the first day of the first ever HasCon, so we tried not to put anything on here that we thought was likely to get announced over the weekend. Tiger Stripe Wolverine got a lot of votes, and while I was writing this script, he was officially announced at HasCon, so there was no reason to add him to the list. On top of that, producer Greg finished editing this video before the final Marvel Legends were revealed, and then he went on staycation. Even with the precautions we had taken in compiling the list, there were still a few adjustments that needed to be made to the final video based on those last reveals, and I had to make them. But look, I've been watching TV and movies my whole life, and I've seen three, four of the videos that we've posted here at Toy Galaxy. And besides, producer Greg is always talking about how this show is a waste of his time, talent, and vision. So I figured, well then, how hard can it be for someone with no time, talent, or vision? I think you'll agree that this video Pretty good. Number 10 is Riri Williams, AKA Ironheart. Marvel Legends needs another Iron Man figure like it needs another Iron Man figure, which is to say that it doesn't. But the draw of the brand, the armor, the word iron is too strong to resist. So if there is to be another iron suit, let's really throw a variety wrench in there and utilize that smaller teenage figure for a Stark style armor. Throw in both helmeted and unhelmeted heads, open and closed hands, repulsor effects that already exist, and you've got yourself a next generation winner, a character who is going to be a key player in the Marvel Universe for years to come. Number 9 is Netflix vs. Luke Cage and Iron Fist. Marvel Legends has already seen the release of Daredevil, Elektra, Jessica Jones, and The Punisher based on their appearances in the Marvel Cinematic Universe in various Netflix series. If we're going in order, Luke Cage and Iron Fist are clearly next in line and necessary additions to complete the Defenders roster. The Defenders season, which debuted this year on Netflix, was the entire purpose, the raison d'etre, of the Netflix verse, which began with Daredevil season one back in 2015. How are you gonna leave out 50% of the roster? But don't try to sell them separately. Everyone is going to want both of them. Just put them together and make one great whole out of two great halves. Just like you should have done with the shows. Number eight is Sauron. I wasn't even thinking about this character until it showed up in the survey. I don't even think a lot of people know anything about him or care. But when I saw that suggestion, I jumped up out of my chair and looked right at my cat and said, yes, a pterodactyl man with giant pterodactyl wings. That's what we've been missing this whole time. I don't care who he is in the comics or whether he's even currently alive or active. Things like robots, intergalactic bounty hunters, ninjas, and pterodactyl mans are the whole reason I love action figures to begin with. He could even come carded on the retro style cards that Hasbro showed off at SDCC earlier this year. Just don't skimp out on those wings. Big, leathery, giant pterodactyl wings that make me believe that a dinosaur man can fly. Number seven is at number seven, Beast. Hank McCoy last appeared in the Toys R Us exclusive all-new X-Men box set featuring the original five X-Men in their original blue and yellow student uniforms back in 2014. This was the regular human-looking beast, though. No blue fur, nothing to really make him an obvious mutant outcast other than his size 39 shoes and hands that can palm a watermelon. Fans want a modern update to the non-kitty-faced, non fraser non crane blue furry beast who fights crime in his underpants, embracing his obvious mutant nature while doing science upside down. He's an X-Man, he's an X-Factoran, an Avenger, a Defender, and part of the Marvel Illuminati. Whose leg does he have to rub up against to get a new figure made? Number six is Professor X. And while you're making stuff to put in X-Men waves, let's make some real headway on that 90s roster. The roster that a lot of people call classic because they aren't old enough or cool enough to know that the classic roster is the Outback roster. The 90s roster is just too shiny. 
But the 90s roster does have an actively involved Professor X, and he's got a really nifty hover-around chair that's just begging to be made out of sweet, vac-metalized gold. I love gold. Or at least, whatever they've been using for the gold on Iron Man armors. Do a variant with a regular wheelchair, or just make it a box set like the upcoming Ghost Rider with motorcycle, and throw both of those chairs in there. Number three is Cyber. Number five is Nightcrawler. Either Blue Fur is in this year or people just like the X-Men. Kurt's last comic-based figure, Kurt's only comic-based figure, was released in 2005, early 2005. And while it's aged better than most Toy Biz Legends from that era, it's still aged and aging more every day. There's no question that the team of designers and artists at Hasbro could improve on this piece. Better articulation, smaller chin, and a bunch of cool accessories like a Banff doll and some swords. Heck, I'd even wave my no finger or toe articulation rule for this figure if Hasbro wanted to go there. <laughs> Number four is Vision. In any Vision, all the Visions. Who goes out of their way to create a character that becomes a big box office movie star in multiple summer blockbusters and then not capitalize on that popularity? You guys literally wrote the playbook on this. Hasbro, Marvel, Disney. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. We already had V-neck sweater Vision on our volume two list last year. Are you working on that? What's the holdup? Classic comic Vision needs an update. MCU caped Vision never happened because I can't understand why. And V-neck Vision has the potential to be on the Mount Rushmore of amazing action figures. And we're all just gonna sit around here not making it? Uh Number three, Kingpin. Choice on this one, classic comic styled or Vincent Donafrio, Donafrio, is that how it's pronounced? Vincent Donafrio Netflix version. Kane, no Kane, open hands, punching hands. He could be big enough to be a Build-A-Figure if you wanna go that way. Marvel Legends in general is light on classic villains. The unspoken moratorium on Fantastic Four and X-Men products of the last several years didn't help. Limiting it to their appearances in films doesn't help either. Kingpin is a big dude that would fill up a lot of empty space in a hurry. Because he's fat. Number two is Spider-Ham. It pains me to not make the ham the number one most wanted figure on this list for a third year running, but even with the plus 10 points modifier that my personal votes get in the tabulation, Peter Porker still couldn't beat the cat sitting in the number one spot. And no, it's not Captain Americat. I just mean cat as a slang term of familiarity, like I'm a cool cat or producer Greg is cat's pajamas. Spider-Man was cool long before Spider-Verse or the Web Warriors or any of that stuff. But that stuff happened. Spider-Man 2099 is out there. Spider-Punk is coming. You're making Gwenpool. Spider-Ham has been around since 1983. Don't keep the ham on hold any longer. Pick up the phone. Line one. It's for you. It's ham. So many characters, so many votes, so many great suggestions. And there was even that person who voted for Panda Pool and Fabian Cortez, and that's... That's not happening. But one character absolutely ran away with the stats. He built an early lead and just kept extending it and no one was even close. Number one is Gambit. He's got cool powers. He hasn't had an update since 2003 and that figure isn't bad, but I'm sure Hasbro can do even better now. Look, I don't have to tell you why you want him. You know why. That hair, that totally natural cool that just emanates from him, the roguish good looks, no pun intended, that charming but simultaneously disarming smile, those eyes that just pierce your soul. You just feel like you can't hide anything from him. It's all the same reasons you watch this show. Those are the 10 most wanted Marvel Legends, despite lots of votes for an updated Classic Hulk, Classic Thor, Beast, Archangel, Beta Ray Bill, and Speedball, because I don't know, some of you just go your own way and that's okay. Be you, don't apologize. Whew, dodged a bullet there. Now we know we don't have to plan ahead when Greg goes away, I can just take over. Everything's cool. Thanks for watching. Thanks again. I cannot say thanks again enough to everyone on the Action Figure subreddit, our Patreon, and our Facebook page who submitted your lists. It was invaluable information and made producing this video a heck of a lot of fun. Please hit like, subscribe if you aren't already a subscriber, share this video, join us on Patreon today, patreon.com slash toygalaxy, and let us know in the comments below which one of you wants to start the change.org petition to get the ham rolling. I'll sign it if you start it. Time to inject some ham into this toy line. <laughs>